cataractcoach.com. Horizontal chop technique with a white cataract and a brunette one. And our guest surgeon is Dr. Hafidi Zuhair from Morocco. Watch carefully. Here's the white cataract. Phaco probe goes in the eye. The nucleus will be held by the phaco probe by impaling the probe into it with high vacuum. Chopper around the lens equator. Instruments brought together and apart. Now rotate and repeat this to break off the first quadrant. So here, there's a little bit of a leap of faith as you place that chopper under the anterior capsular rim and then around the lens equator. So watch again. Chopper goes around the equator of the lens. This is important. So you don't want to damage that anterior capsular rim or break his angular support. So then that last little quadrant here from the first half is brought up and emulsified. And you can see there's just one half of the nucleus remaining in the bag. It can be brought up and chopped quite effectively. Now, once the first half is out of the eye, it becomes a lot easier to chop because there's a lot more working room. But it's the initial chop or two where you have to place the equator, the chopper around the equator of the lens. And that does require a skill set. You have to know where you're placing it. At the end here, just removing a few little straggling pieces and time for the cortex removal. So this is definitely a technique that you can learn. It works better in a lens that has a significant degree of nuclear density. So it's not great for a very soft nucleus. You're better off with a lens that's at least 3 plus nuclear sclerosis if you're just learning this technique. Here's a very thick piece of epinuclear shell, and you can just use the chopper here to help push that down the port of the eye handpiece. But the key in this surgery is the positioning of the instruments and then the foot control. So you buzz in the phaco probe into the nucleus and then slightly retract to high vacuum. So barely go to position three once the tip is buried and you hear the high vacuum level of at least 300, maybe even 400 millimeters of mercury. Then the chopper is placed around the lens equator. The two instruments are then brought directly together and then apart to propagate that chop all the way through the nucleus. And then you can rotate and you can further sub-chop to create quadrants or even smaller pieces. So that worked really well. Now in a brunescent lens, which we're gonna show you next, it's a little bit more challenging. So here finishing up the cortex removal, that looks great. You know the rest of the case. Here's the brunescent one. A lot of nuclear density here. So again, the phaco probe is gonna be placed and it's gonna be buried into that nucleus. Now I do bevel down, but this doctor does bevel up. Doesn't really matter, but you have to achieve occlusion and high vacuum. So buzzing in here, chopper goes around the equator. The instruments are brought together and it's a dense one and split apart and there you go. And it's okay if you don't propagate the chop fully through because you're gonna rotate it and break off a quadrant. So buzzing in again, placement of that chopper and then we can keep doing this to break up the nucleus and remove it. Now the brunescent lens like this, there's often a thick posterior plate. And so sometimes your chops will seem ineffective and it looks like you're creating almost petals of a flower where they're all attached at the bottom and you really can't separate them. The trick is to do what Dr. Zuhair is doing, which is chop, chop, and more chop. Just stay at it. Stay with it, do more and more chops. Eventually you'll get a piece broken off. So nice and easy, burying the phaco probe, chop around the equator of the lens and the instruments together and then apart. Now, it is a little bit daunting. If you're just starting off, you've done less than 100 cases, it's sometimes very difficult to confidently place that chopper under the anterior capsule rim and around the lens equator. For that reason, I advocate for my resin to start with something like a combo chop. So if you go to cataractcoach.com and search for combo chop, it's a combination of a horizontal and vertical together where the phaco probe is put in the middle, but the chopper doesn't have to go around the lens equator. Instead, you can just put the chopper within the nucleus. Now he's stopping halfway through and recoating the endothelium with dispersive viscoelastic. That's a smart move. Because remember, with this dense brunescent lens, you're going to put in more and more ultrasonic energy, and you're going to wash away some of the viscoelastic that was protecting the cornea. So to replenish it halfway through nucleus removal is definitely a smart move. That's going to help ensure that you have a relatively clear cornea on post-op day one. So you see what I mean by the pieces are still kind of attached, and you can only break off little small fragments at a time. That's typical. 
But by being persistent here and sticking with it, you can see half the nucleus has already been removed. There's one half gone. The second half now is a lot easier to remove because there's more working room in the eye. So chop, chop, and more chop, and then the last piece will come out quite nicely. So a beautiful technique here. If you've got your sea legs and you know how to operate within the eye and look how the eye stays in primary and you can control your instruments, then you can definitely try horizontal chop too. Just be careful when you place the chopper, don't damage the anterior capsular rim and be sure you place the chopper around the equator of that lens nucleus. That'll ensure the highest chance of success when you try your first horizontal chop. Thanks for the video, doctor. I know you love the YouTube videos, but check out the website, cataractcoach.com. A lot easier to navigate. We have a complete list of articles and videos. You can go and check on any of these categories and explore more. You can also search. There's a search engine that's really effective. You can see Gore-Tex lenses like this. And finally, you can look up about me. There's a link that has my surgical instruments. Now you don't even have to ask me. You can just find out for yourself what's the name of those forceps.